Well, hello, my friends. How are you today? I hope you've had a good week. You know, it's been kind of a serious week here at Friendship Village of Dublin. So I thought I would share something light with you to kind of kick off our time together today. There was an old man who was on his deathbed and he wanted to be buried with all of his money. So he called his priest, his doctor, and his lawyer to his bedside. Here's $30,000 cash to be held by each of you, he said. I trust you to put this in my coffin when I die so that I can take all my money with me. Well, at the funeral, each man put an envelope in the coffin with the deceased. Riding away in a limousine, the priest suddenly broke into tears and confessed, I only put $20,000 in the envelope because I needed $10,000 to repair the roof on the church. Well, since we're confiding in each other, the doctor said, I put in only $10,000 in the envelope because we needed a new X-ray machine on the pediatrics ward at the hospital, which cost $20,000. Well, the lawyer, he was aghast, and he said to the two of them, I'm ashamed of the both of you. I want it to be known that when I put the envelope in that coffin, I enclosed a check for the full $30,000. Well, you know, trust can be a funny thing, and it can also be uh, a very serious thing. And so I wanted to kind of look for a few minutes today at trust within the church, within the body of Christ. You know, I read this week about a pastor, and for that pastor, he was required to turn in a weekly schedule of all of his pastoral calls. He was required to log each hour he spent in prayer. Uh, he was required for each hour and every minute of preparing for worship and for classes he taught within the church. And for each hour he spent preparing for teaching and preaching, each hour he spent um, responding to emails, sending emails, and making phone calls. And in my mind, sadly, this illustrates that there's an inherent lack of trust uh, in many of our churches. And in the church, I think, in general, you know, this pastor's personnel committee, the committee that he worked for, wanted to make sure that he was really working, you know, because, well, we pastors, we only work on Sundays. But they wanted to make sure that he was working. The committee failed to realize something. What they failed to realize was that the pastor couldn't do pretty much all of this if he wanted to in a coffee shop or even at home because he could accomplish all those elements of his job while still rubbing elbows with people who needed Christ. So simply put, the committee, the members of the church, didn't believe that that pastor was trustworthy. And they wanted to know how he spent every minute of his entire week. So today, I'd like to kind of tackle a bit of a tough topic. Why do people in the church not trust each other? because I believe there's a big element of that in the church today. And I would submit to you that the lack of trust is evident when we don't share our burdens with each other, when uh, we don't share our needs with each other, when we don't share our heartaches and our pain with each other. It's evident in something like when we have health challenges and we never share it with anybody else so that they can walk through that with us. So listen to what James the Apostle wrote in James chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. He says this, If anyone among you is suffering, let him pray. If anyone among you is sick, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him. Confess your sins to one another and pray for one another. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. 
I thought those were terrific words from the Apostle James, where he talks about trusting each other in the body of Christ. So how do we cultivate, how do we cultivate um, an idea or trust within the body of Christ? I believe there's a story in the Gospel of Mark that's going to help us with this. It might give us some insights into how we can cultivate trust within the body of Christ among ourselves. So in this story, there's a man. Um, he's the head of a synagogue. His name is Jairus. Maybe you've heard this story. And he approaches Jesus because his young daughter is at home dying. So Jesus and Jairus and a contingent of the disciples head to Jairus' house when they're interrupted. And maybe you're familiar with this story also. It's found in Mark's Gospel, chapter 5. Um, if you have a Bible and you'd like to follow along, that would be great. I'll be using the English Standard Version today. You may have another translation. That's totally fine. I think you'll be able to track with me. But we're going to begin in uh, Mark chapter 5, verses 25 and 26. This is how the story goes. And there was a woman who had had a discharge of blood for 12 years and who had suffered much under many physicians and had spent all that she had and was no better but grew worse. Now, is that a story you're familiar with? I think most of us are a little bit familiar with this story if we've been in the church for any amount of time. Here's a woman with an incurable blood disease. It appears she's been suffering for a long time. She sought help from doctors for her affliction. Uh, and you know, that happens in the church regularly. Somebody has a health issue. Maybe it's even a health crisis. Uh, they see a doctor, they see a specialist, they see a surgeon, an oncologist. They might even see uh, a podiatrist for something like an ingrown toenail. While at the same time, never breathing a word of it to those in the church who are fellow believers. Never asking for prayer. Never allowing others to carry the burden of their illness with them. Never allowing others within the church to be a caring friend to them. Our story continues in Mark chapter 5, verses 27 and 28. This is what it tells us. She had heard the reports about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if I touch even his garments, I will be made well. And maybe you've heard this story. You know, the woman who wanted to touch just the hem of Jesus's garments for healing. You know, this woman was a lot like we are sometimes. She attempted to navigate her illness in secret. She had hope just to touch Jesus. That was her hope. But she carried her burden alone without the aid of others who might have been able to intercede with Jesus on her behalf. If I touch even his garments, I will be made well, were her thoughts. If I can just do this or, or do that, if I can just get myself into the right place without the help of others, you know what? But that's not what we see as God's desire for the body of Christ. The Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 12, verses 14 through 26, this. He says, For the body does not consist of one member, but of many, that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. Isn't that a great passage of scripture? You know, we don't want to be a burden to people lots of times, but that's what Jesus made the church for. Um, yeah, but you don't know the experiences I've had in the church when I have shared things with people. My trust has been betrayed. That might, that might be the experience of some people. And sadly, that happens way too often. So it's easy to see why people in the church don't find people in the church trustworthy sometimes. 
Well, let's see if we can continue in this story and get some guidance. Mark chapter 5, verses 29 through 30. This is what it tells us. And immediately the flow of blood dried up, and she felt in her body that she had been healed of her disease. And Jesus, perceiving in himself that power had gone out from him, immediately turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my garments? So why does Jesus want to know who touched his garments? Well, Jesus had sensed that power had gone out from him. Now, what that means, I'm not exactly sure, but there was an awareness by Jesus that he had been touched intentionally. This woman's faith had activated something in Jesus. And in the next few verses, we see he was in the middle of a crowd and was likely being touched by a lot of people. It's Mark chapter 5, verses 31 through 34. This story continues. And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing around you, and yet you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. This woman, she was a lot like we are sometimes. She was full of dread, fear, and trembling about disclosing our afflictions. What was she afraid of? Well, I believe she was afraid of having her illness exposed because she would have been so much shamed because of her illness. This became the moment of liberation for this woman. She told Jesus the whole truth, who she was, what was wrong with her, the secret desire to be healed by him, her fear, her trepidation, she had been she had been an unclean woman in that society for a good period of time. Jesus made this woman tell the crowd about her shame, about her weakness, about her hopelessness, so that she could receive healing and the cleansing that she needed. Jesus made her shame a showcase of his grace. And shame became something the woman didn't have to carry any longer because now everybody knew about it. And you know what? We're all weak sometimes. We all have issues sometimes like this woman did. You know, it appears this woman didn't have anybody to help carry the burdens of her illness. Well, couldn't she just rely on Jesus to heal her? That's what somebody might say. Yes, and, and she does in this case. But Jesus formed the church in such a way that he wants others to help carry our burdens. When we, as the church, don't trust each other, it does a couple of significant things. First, it doesn't allow us to fulfill what the Apostle Paul commands in Romans 12, 15, where he writes, Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. We never get the chance to weep with people because of what they might be carrying with them. It never allows us uh, to entrust our joys and our sorrows to others. I will bask in my joy and suffer in my sorrows alone. Now, similarly, it doesn't allow us to fulfill the Apostle Paul's commands found in Galatians 6, 2, where he writes, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. If I never entrust my burdens to others, I will carry those burdens by myself, something God never intended. Not only that, but I'll extinguish the possibility of the fulfillment of the law of Christ to be accomplished 
and that is to love your neighbor as yourself and to allow your neighbor to love you as he or she loves him or herself. This happens in the body of Christ every day. And it doesn't matter if the body of Christ is gathered in a church building. It doesn't matter if it's gathered in somebody's home, or it doesn't matter if it's gathered in one of our services here at Friendship Village of Dublin. My lack of trust uh, doesn't just affect my relationship with others in the church, but it also affects my relationship with God. When I'm not willing to trust others, I'm demonstrating a lack of trust that God will use and work through others just as he does through me. So how do we cultivate trust within the body of Christ? You know, as this woman did, it takes vulnerability and a willingness to let go of my pride and a willingness to let go of any shame that I might be carrying. It's going to take me as an individual within the body of Christ to say, I will risk my pride and my shame for the sake of obeying Jesus's desire for his church. Well, I wanted to leave you with a quote from Ralph Waldo Emerson, who once said this, trust men and they will be true to you. Treat them greatly, and they will show themselves to be great. It's a serious thing to allow yourself to be vulnerable to somebody, but if we do, others will demonstrate themselves to be great by caring for our vulnerability, just as Jesus would. Let's have a prayer together. Father, help us in the church to trust one another with our cares, our burdens, our desires, our worries, our fears, all those things that lots of times we don't want to share with others. Help us to be vulnerable to each other in the love that you expect, and it will be helpful to us in the church. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I hope you continue to stay safe, stay healthy, be encouraged, I'll see you the next time. God bless all of you.